Welcome to OATUG webinar uh, for today. And it's been really pleasant to have you all for today's session. Uh, so quickly jumping into the uh, topic before that, a quick brief about who uh, NextInfo is. So we as NextInfo are in Oracle uh, space for 20 plus years headquartered in Southern California with presence across the United States, Europe, and India, uh, primarily into business process and software consulting services, uh, catering to ERP supply chain, EPM, HCM, like multiple uh, domains. Uh, from software product expertise, uh, Oracle is one of the primary one, but we also cater to like SAP, Connexus, NetSuite, and many more. And uh, with regard to being uh, recognitions, if it uh, talk about that like from Gartner, from Inc. 5000, uh, CIO 10 most promising ERP service providers, and recently uh, uh, last month on 16th of December also featured into Yahoo Finance as uh, uh, next info taking forward from enterprise application type of customers, the transformation services also to small and medium sized uh, customers too. So with that, uh, moving to uh, about a quick brief about myself. Uh, I'm a solution delivery lead and senior architect from NextInfo, been into uh, Oracle uh, space, helping customers with the business transformation and optimization initiatives across uh, ERP, supply chain, uh, HCM, et cetera. And uh, been a cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud Information Specialist certified professional, uh, been also cloud evangelist and have spoken at multiple OATG or Oracle forums, including higher education, U, Collaborate, Ascent, and also the regional OATG forums. So with that, uh, quickly moving about thought for the day, and I would just like a little bit spend a time here just so that we have the context and how you can foresee the context for this session. So you would have heard about for a want of a horse nail, a kingdom was lost. Right, and that's something if we just try to relate it into today's world. Uh, for want of a tracking, the customer was lost. Uh, for the want of a process, product compliance was lost. Uh, for the real time data availability and flexibility, uh, financial control was lost. And externally, we'll, we'll hear a lot of such kind of things. Now, the, the point here is uh, can we have a system which provides us? with real-time data, it provides the flexibility, it wants, it meets our business process need, it provides a re real-time tracking, but at the same time, it does not do away with any other financial control. It doesn't compromise, it doesn't compromise with any of your compliance requirements or security breaches, et cetera. And that's where our, com our system plays a critical role, uh, how it can, along with this compliance and security needs and controls, can still meet the business process need. So with that, uh, uh, going to what do companies look out for when talking about a manufacturing, right? You're talking about your discrete or process manufacturing in any of the scenarios. What do companies typically look, look out for? So the manufacturing unit would uh, require, uh, does the system provide you the visibility with regard to your planning, like effective planning and scheduling of manufacturing? Uh, can I get a real-time visibility into what are the supply requests and system helps in orchestrating those supply requests into your orders, your work orders, your sales orders, whatever the process is, and also other from outside standpoint to contract manufacturing, right? Uh, does it provide you with uh, your real-time material availability? What is your inventory looking like? And also it provides you with your effective uh, cost part of it, right? Able to provide the real-time cost uh, uh, visibility, what's the cost you're incurring. And not only that, specifically when you talk about uh, from the process manufacturing, and also it's also in the discrete, like uh, what is the version of the product that's been there, what specification, and uh, also with regard to where it's been located in real-time inventory count, right? So uh, all these things are very critical, and not only that, towards uh, once your manufacturing unit is up and running, there's maintenance management required for your machines and your facilities. Uh, is it effectively uh, defect tracking is happening or not? Uh, and also specifically you know, talk about, uh, uh, does the system provide effective way to track your genealogy, right? Uh, specifically this happens in the case of your uh, pharma sector or healthcare life sciences sector, right? 
So uh, I think that's odd. Uh, typically, customers or people on the shop floor or the manufacturing plant expect from a system. And can it provide that functionality uh, effectively also from your handheld or mobile uh, or gadget-based devices to make your work easier? So you're going to touch upon all these things as part of this presentation. So quickly uh, running through the agenda, what we'll be covering is uh, what are the different offerings that Oracle Cloud has got? And where does this uh, manufacturing function or manufacturing business process fit into the overall cloud offering? We're going to talk about the process versus discrete manufacturing. Uh, what is mixed mode process flow and how does it really help organizations to leverage either their to process discrete or uh, both combinations, right? Uh, post that, we're going to touch upon the case studies. We're going to talk about uh, multiple case studies from the manufacturers, uh, which are process, discrete, uh, combination of both, etc. And what are the best practices, what they have leveraged? And then talking about so the cross-functional flows uh, and also uh, how it looks like going social and mobile and how you can utilize the functionality of Oracle to effectively uh, maintain a manufacturing business process. So with that, uh, what you see here is the offering which Oracle Cloud has got. It has got complete suite of offering. Many, many of you would maybe using it, a uh, portion of the functionalities, but as you can see, it's uh, across from financials, procurement, supply chain, uh, your GRC, which is risk and compliance. It has got industry solutions and country localizations. And the good thing about it is whatever the business process you pick it up, uh, it can be EPM or financials or supply chain or manufacturing. Uh, Oracle has got uh, an inbuilt capability with regard to your social network, mobile reporting and dashboard, uh, and your self service functionalities and uh, the predictive uh, analytics and uh, integration. Now, with that being said, let's start to look more into the supply chain. What are the different modules does Oracle Cloud provide for supply chain? So, from supply chain, uh, as you can see in the top, supply chain planning, one of the critical parts for your demand planning, your Supply planning, etc., and then you got your procurement, manufacturing, order management, logistics, inventory. Now, uh, all these modules, what you see as the different blocks here. The good thing about Oracle is it provides an integrated solution where you got uh, all the nuances of the data flow happen between those those modules. Is an underlying integrated uh, uh, data structure that decides, and that's where it provides the visibility of a cross-functional business process. That's one of the advantage of that. And it also shares your master data, like product master, customer master, item master, et cetera, across all your supply chain models. So let's have a look into a quick functional architecture. Right? Again, what we are trying to show here is how does uh, Oracle modules talk with each other with just one of the like, uh, quick schematic of that. So from supply chain management, as you can see, Oracle Manufacturing Cloud, which is one of the central piece, uh, talks with your product model, your master data. It talks with your planning central, uh, supply planning uh, activities, basically for your scheduling of your orders, and then talks with purchasing from your purchase order. And with supply chain orchestration, which you see, uh, basically getting the details, uh, supply chain or orchestration, getting the details with regard to what are the request for the different supplies, and then it eventually converts those into those work orders or your orders, these orders that have been created to meet those supply needs. Manufacturing is integrated. And then you've got other uh, critical component as cost management receiving part. So it effectively talks with your cost management model of Oracle so that you have your, based on your work or the status, your operational transactions, uh, what are the resource rates being applicable so that you can get a real-time visibility of what the cost is looking like. Again, you can have that visibility by your manufacturing unit also. And then uh, continuously in uh, data flow between manufacturing cloud and inventory management and ability to cater to your large serial needs uh, and also it provides your on-hand quantity. So basically that's what something which uh, typically as part of an integrated system, a customer would be looking out for. And on top, on the right side, what you can see is there may be scenarios where customers are using uh, third-party manufacturing execution systems, right? Or maybe a customer is having multiple orgs and 
one of the org is using Oracle, whereas there's other plant or other unit which is using a different application. So it has got a capability to integrate uh, using multiple integration tools that are available, or features available, including Oracle Integration Cloud, which is one of the offering of Oracle, where it can talk with uh, Oracle supply chain uh, along with the third-party application. So now let's talk about the process and discrete manufacturing, right? So one of the key challenges which many of the uh, manufacturers have is uh, e, how to handle uh, this process effectively that where I'm currently into the discrete manufacturing and I may be embarking on my business area where it may be leading to process manufacturing. Or to say that I'm having both process and discrete uh, as a steps of my manufacturing. How, or can I have a system which can cater to both of them? Uh, in addition to it, like discrete manufacturing mostly don't have the shelf life and expiration issues. So how I can uh, design my system to cater to those needs if I have a shelf life expiration issues, uh, the release details, which has to be maintained, right? So that's what uh, typically with a traditional ERP system, the manufacturers were really forced to either to make a choice, okay, which way it is more and either to maintain two different systems or to uh, use one and other is more like a manual or manual intervention based process. Now with that being said, uh, the key challenge which it leads to is you don't have a single system which provides you the visibility uh, if you need to cater to both um, discrete as well as process manufacturing. And specifically from the cost standpoint, if something has been maintained in different systems, you don't get a single place of cost visibility. So what is the road ahead? So as a part of uh, Oracle Cloud offering, uh, Oracle Supply Chain uh, offering, Oracle Manufacturing Clouds provides the flexibility to run both a hybrid or mixed mode manufacturing environment. We're going to talk about what is a mixed mode manufacturing in the subsequent slide, but that's what is one of the critical functionality which manufacturers can adopt uh, to fast pace and shift towards like the going industry demands of Industry 4.0. And in, in order to meet this uh, constant changes, what const, uh, like typically customers or consumers have to ask for, uh, which can play a role for both discrete and process manufacturing. So that's what an Oracle Manufacturing Cloud, or I would say rather Oracle Supply Chain, uh, because it's not just a manufacturing module alone, but as part of the different modules together, meets the business need of any of the manufacturing unit. So let's try to have a look into what's uh, mixed mode manufacturing. So as you can see here on the slide, the mixed mode manufacturing provides an option where you have an, uh, a kind of a mixed mode with regard to your products, right? So for example, uh, as a part of the manufacturing, uh, the mixed mode manufacturing solution, Cloud gives the flexibility to efficiently manage your bulk materials in batches along with your co-products and byproducts and support for the standard cost planning. Uh, as you can see here, like the first on the left most is the manage your work definition. So you define your recipes to make a batch with co-products and byproducts. Now we're going to see in subsequent slide a uh, little bit with a more pictorial representation or the snapshot of how it looks like. But essentially from your, your work definition stage itself, you can determine and you can design your process based on your uh, discrete or uh, process manufacturing business needs. So trying to have single system which you can drive both the business processes. So uh, from the work definition, you create your batch work orders based on your process or the product needs. And then you can execute your batch work orders and effectively it goes to your cost planning and accounting. Now, the whole process about your work definition, definition from based on which you define your work orders and then you execute your orders, all those, uh, those three steps typically go uh, different depending on your process or discrete, but eventually it lands up in your cost planning and cost accounting so that you get a real time visibility for both type of business processes. And that's where your mixed mode manufacturing uh, helps organizations uh, if you're having the dual processes of um, your uh, recipes approach or you have your bomb for your discrete manufacturing, both are being taken care of as a part of this functionality.
And to take it forward, you can also track your genealogy and analyze the production. Basically, with regard to track your trace and lot of genealogy, right? So with that, uh, let me take, move you to the next slide, uh, showcasing a snapshot of how does the work definition uh, screen look like in Oracle. So when you're trying to uh, define your work definition, which is more like your template for it, uh, you're making a choice that this work definition, I'm defining it for which work method, right? It's for process manufacturing, or is it for the discrete manufacturing? So you can define your process according to it. So in this case, as you can see, for the process manufacturing, defining for the juice production line one, associating the description, uh, the batch quantity, and end of measure accordingly. Similarly, uh, I mean, you can define the additional details with regard to your versions, your date, your attachments, supporting documents for it. So once you have defined your work definition in Oracle system, uh, you can have real-time visibility and you can try to search for your work definition and you can uh, determine for this work definition, like again, uh, you can go it by cost allocation by percentage or fixed value. Uh, again, taking forward the same example of uh, for the juice production line one, as you can see, like uh, operations for like 70 labeling and uh, this once it's been defined, you can have your whole work definition been defined for similarly for your uh, process and the discrete here. And the good thing about this being it in one single system, having two different processes being aligned, you're going to have a visibility of your cost in the single system. Uh, you can also, uh, as a part of this, define a batch process using a drag and drop interaction to create operations and assign equipment and labor resources as per the need. So, uh, if you have a need with regard to your batch process, so for example, here you can actually create your standard work order, uh, selecting that work method, and on the basis of your process uh, and the quantity that you define it here you can have your work orders been created. And the same screen uh, is where you can create your work orders and on the uh, same screen, you can also make any update. So if you try to uh, have any of the changes that have been required, you can have your work definition or the, rather the work order and you can actually uh, make any changes. Uh, you can scale up or scale down based on your business needs. So in the screen, as you can see, uh, if you would like to have scaling up by the quantity, uh, whatever you require, you're able to make uh, the changes right away on that screen. And this is how it actually helps uh, the work order creator to not only have it created, but get a real time visibility with what's been ordered and do it on the same screen before it's been committed. Uh, and this batch admin uh, adjustments are needed due to like material constraints. It can be or maybe for your yield variance uh, where the upstream batch has been requested to scale up for any of the reasons, right? Now, talking about uh, a functionality to able to track your genealogy, right? So basically, in many of uh, the organizations, particularly in the bulk truck sector or the pharma industries, this is very critical. Uh, Oracle provides a, uh, regulatory compliance, uh, it provides the visibility with regard to any of the efficient recalls that are been required to be made or any of the process improvement on how to make a system uh, having less wastage and more lean system. That's what uh, Oracle is able to beat the requirement for such kind of sectors. And as you can see here, like you have like serialized item has been integrated as a part of your which is important for you to track your genealogy from the overall uh, product standpoint. So with that, uh, moving to uh, talking about the case studies uh, in for the different manufacturers. So this is a case study for Sakura Fine Tech. Uh, they are uh, medical equipment manufacturers specializing in the histopathology and cytology. Uh, they have been spread across uh, three different global regions, uh, Europe, USA, and Japan. Uh, for this customer, they have both like discrete and process manufacturing facilities. And specifically, the uh, discrete is with regard to the medical equipment that they create, whereas the process is with regard to 
the reagents which they uh, from the solvents which they prepare uh, for the medical facility. So they have uh, both a, a combination of both manufacturing uh, functionalities. And uh, again, the challenges were like uh, to integrate three disparate uh, Oracle cloud applications. So from the scope standpoint, if we talk about the different modules which were implemented, were uh, supply chain uh, track which included like Oracle uh, order management, manufacturing inventory, cost management, supply planning, etc., procurement, uh, finance application. Uh, which had the core finance uh, modules, and then CX, which was like for the customer experience, like service cloud install base were implemented. And uh, they had a log file for the warehouse management functionality. Uh, and also for the reporting uh, standpoint, like FAW, uh, Pigeon Analytics Warehouse was implemented uh, for the financial supply chain. Supply chain being on the roadmap, but financial is what's been started to be adopted for the usage. Now, uh, when you're talking about the three disparate Oracle Cloud applications is essentially your uh, Fusion Cloud, your CX, which is your service cloud uh, integration, and third is your warehouse uh, management application, which is log file. So that's one of the challenge. In addition to it, uh, one of the key aspect was uh, to get a visibility of that indented bomb, right? So uh, when you're defining your bomb with multi, uh, level of your uh, item structure. Uh, what is the availability at each of the child and parent levels? That is something typically uh, required. So uh, how to make that uh, much of a user friendly? So try to help customer by having that indented bomb report that they can get a visibility into one single report for uh, the different items which have been at a parent or child level, whatever level they are. And uh, also having EDI interfacing uh, with the different systems, uh, like for the for the order inbound order acknowledgement and integrating with Pitney Boss as a shipping application, which they were they were having, and for third party uh, expense system, which is expense wire. So utilized uh, platform as a service to have few of the business rules defined to transform the data before uh, it's been sent to the third party applications. It may be EDI or it is like a Pitney Bowes or it is uh, expense wire application. And also uh, platform as a service was utilized also to def uh, design few of the uh, custom user scenarios required for interacting between uh, CX application and uh, Oracle Fusion application. So essentially the service cloud, which is like route right now to Fusion integration, uh, to get uh, effective rules been captured uh, as part of the order creation process uh, from CX to Fusion supply chain model. So with that, uh, uh, one more thing, which uh, with regard to the uh, reagent manufacturing, uh, they adopted again this mixed mode of manufacturing essentially to cater to their uh, reagent uh, shelf life and uh ensuring that they are using manufacturing cloud effectively to for both their discrete and process manufacturing uh talking about another case study which is uh for ta america uh again they are automotive component manufacturers uh it's more into the discrete manufacturing space uh spread across uh 10 different countries uh diverse line of products and uh again from the from the scope standpoint, as you can see, like a uh, complete suite of supply chain modules were implemented along with uh, core finance. And uh, with regard to the uh, Key America, uh, how the customer has utilized their uh, adoption for Oracle Cloud with supply chain, one of the key aspect was uh, they, they wanted an, uh, the, the way uh, which is flexible and smart enough to capture their item details, right? So basically the item master creation was happening because they are into automotive component manufacturing. So that is one of the key part of, this, uh, of the business process. Uh, Oracle provides uh, pretty much detailed uh, attributes capturing for the item creation, but what they required essentially is how can they have a smart form or smart way wherein with a minimal amount of clicks you can have it. So as a part of it, uh, we as an example helped in developing a custom smart form 
for item capturing so that they can have the business rules also being captured as a part of the item creation, which can help them automating the process. So just a quick schematic of uh, the what are different attributes which are being uh, touched upon as a part of the smart form that was created for uh, the customer for the item creation process, which includes not only the item and master or item details, but also capturing the sourcing rules, uh, quotation related details, item categories, few of the cross references which were acquired and uh, captioning of the customer item. So all those details which were uh, which are captured in Oracle, but across multiple different uh, tabs or pages or screens, if I may have to say, of uh, Oracle Cloud, a smart form was created which have all those uh, fields captured in one single page as a smart form for, the, for them to provide the details. So let me just take you to uh, quickly with regard to how that schematic of the page looks like. As you can see here, uh, item details been captured in the header details, which includes your item number, your your template, uh, what is your STS code, your customer for uh, tagging to it. In addition to it, as you can see below, uh, capturing the the lot control details, uh, sourcing rule if there, those are required as a part of it, your min max order quantity, uh, safety stock details. So all those details, all those attributes were uh, designed into the single smart form without customer required to uh, navigate to different tabs of the page. And this helps basically because this being a critical part of the business process, a requirement, uh, so design which was integrated, obviously uh, underlying sitting into the Oracle data structure to take it forward for the automated process. With that, uh, moving to the third case study uh, about the wonderful company, Again, this is a case study which is more on the process manufacturing. Uh, the wonderful company, like you would have uh, seen the wonderful fish statues uh, or maybe the Fiji water. So they are into multiple different product lines. Uh, so they basically, they grow, harvest, bottle, package, and market a diverse range of health products, right? Uh, into like fruits, nuts, flowers, water, wines, and juices. So that's one of the good uh, case study we thought of sharing with regard to the process manufacturing, uh, which has been adopted from the Oracle Cloud standpoint. Uh, scope being uh, product management costing like all those uh, supply chain modules. Uh, key challenges were like um, being on the legacy uh, uh, Oracle EVS application, like on-prem application with lots of customizations. And one of the key uh, asks was of requiring to eliminate uh, and able to adopt cloud with the cloud fitment. So uh, complexity of the shelf life requirement, complex warehouse requirement, uh, complex process around the process manufacturing, costing, uh, order management and shipping, basically all those were one of the key challenges uh, while trying to do it. And again, uh, being part of the, uh, having multiple product lines uh, it was one of the additional challenge with regard to this organization. So uh, as a part of this, like supply chain was uh, designed again, utilizing the manufacturing cloud with a with few of the sample examples of the process that we talked about was utilized to meet their process manufacturing needs. Now uh, again, uh, talking back to as we had said, the, the one of the key aspects of the system implementation is essentially uh, to about uh, to allow to provide the compliance along with the financial control uh, from your cost management standpoint, but also to able to have the flexibility for the business process owners to be able to use the system in a flexible way, uh, which can meet the business process need. So this is one of the one of the good examples that for this, uh, where we had a challenges with regard to different product lines and having uh, complexity around uh, uh, the typical challenges of the process manufacturing for the shelf life uh, lot requirement and all those things from the warehouse standpoint. So moving to um, another case study, which is for in the ENU, in energies and utilities space. So this customer is the manufacturer of low cost, long duration um, iron flow batteries, which typically are been, these batteries are being used for in the industrial space. And um, they are like into the niche, into the yeah, this energy sector, the green greenfield energy sector. Uh, from the, so again, uh, one more aspect which we have seen based on the multiple 
uh, projects of the Connect Infras uh, executed, uh, customer adoption is one of the key parts, right? So for this customer specifically, we had a multi-stage or multi-phased adoption uh, of the Oracle Cloud. And like it has got a complete suite of it, like we talk about like uh, finance, supply chain, EPM, uh, and the multiple, like the suite of modules that will be implemented. So started with 2017, where uh, Oracle Fusion for ERP and supply chain was implemented. Stabilization uh, and process integration started as a part of that activity from 2017 to 2019. Uh, auto management cloud and product management cloud was implemented. And uh, essentially with regard to teaching the 2021 is where stepping into the risk compliance part, uh, adoption of EPM, which is for the financial reporting uh, and then the maintenance cloud. And along with uh, OIC, which is integration cloud and supplier portal. So basically getting and embarking on the journey to automate those integrations from uh, Oracle and non-Oracle applications. Uh, for example, uh, your payroll or HR application being the ADP and multitude of other uh, non-Oracle applications. So uh, again, one of the key aspect which uh, where Oracle uh, we have seen has been able to cater to such kind of scenarios is when you would like, when a customer would like to have a single system uh, of records which can not only cater to uh, a specific say, finance or supply chain business process, but uh, multiple uh, business processes and able to have a flexibility to adopt an uh, effective and automated integration uh, and capable to do that being in the cloud. And that's where uh, we've seen it's the agility which Oracle was able to provide to this customer because that was one of the important asks from them. Uh, being into the sector which requires a more of an agility and uh, ability to quickly embark on the projects and get it implemented with a shorter time frame. That's where uh, Oracle Cloud has been uh, way different from what it used to be in the on-prem world. With a shorter life cycle of implementation uh, and able to re-engineer the business process to meet the business need. Uh, and just to give a quick uh, talk about the benefits, like improve the process efficiency and reduction in the time for the financial closing by 30% and increase operational efficiency by 20%. The first, that was something I think one of the things which the stakeholders liked about uh, the cloud implementation as part of it. And uh, even it included the, few, the self service modules with expense, projects, quality, and uh, self service procurement. And that was something which ensured that uh, less of the support staff required and more of a self service adoption. That could that can be seen from the Oracle Cloud, uh, not only from the reporting space but also from your uh, sub sub ledger application standpoint also. So with that, uh, trying to move to what are the best practices to drive uh, complete advan advantage uh, for the manufacturers. So uh, we talked about different case studies, uh, talking about the breadth of modules that were been implemented, uh, talking about both uh, customers either who are in purely into discrete manufacturing or customers who have been purely into like more into the process manufacturing or customers who are having both discrete and process manufacturing. So uh, the key learnings or the best practices that we that we have seen is one, uh, deploy the mixed mode manufacturing to gain a competitive advantage. That's one of the key aspects. I think it's, it's, it's worthwhile to design a system to Cater to both and have a single system for that. Uh, ensure that master data is controlled using a stringent process. So one of the key aspects which Oracle provides, again, it has got its own uh, customer master, product master, uh, and all those things. And it uh, it's very critical that, again, from the overall design standpoint, uh, are, are you using Oracle uh, for the master data management or are you using a third party? Um, irrespective of that, it's very important that it's in controlled way it's maintained so that the changes that's been made are been sent across to multiple systems if it's you are having a centralized MDM system. And if it's Oracle, then it's everything houses in Oracle which takes care of it from your versioning and it's sending it across to be used by different modules. Uh, optimizing your business operations with regard to your smart manufacturing. Now, I think the smart manufacturing is essentially, again, talk about, uh, uh, like again, that itself is, uh, 
a big thing, but here uh, to talk about a couple of contexts uh, which are very critical, A, with regard to uh, able to integrate effectively with your handheld devices or mobile gadget space so that on the shop floor, uh, the workers can actually get the data entry being done much more using the bar barcode manufacturing and with minimum uh, data entry. That is one of the key aspects. And second is for sure is like kind of an IoT type of thing where you're utilizing the sensors and you can have a real time tracking and updates that's happening in the system. So from both standpoint, uh, I think Oracle Cloud is good where you have uh, ability and capability to take, take care of both things. But I think it's more important is from the business operation standpoint, you need to design and prioritize those things as a part of your uh, overall project plan and what is critical to be implemented as part of your uh, overall solution design. Uh, <clears throat> so also again, uh, getting a value uh, to the customers from the real-time data visibility. Now here, uh, one of the key aspect that I would like to highlight is, uh, we have seen the customers like one is, they have been using their Oracle uh, Fusion Cloud uh, modules, which, which has got its inherent uh, dashboards and analytics that's been available. But in addition to it, if you would like to have uh, FAW kind of modules, which we have implemented for our, for our customer, which provides real time data visibility, again, because it uh, inherently integrates with uh, Fusion Financial application or Fusion um, SIM application or Fusion uh, Supply Chain application. So you can have those things as to provide a real time data visibility at a single data warehouse system also. And you can have your uh, your leadership or your management reporting or your financial reporting or uh, any of the dashboards that have been required. So that's something which is critical uh, because those uh, dashboards and requ reporting requirements typically drive the level of tracking, not only that, but also uh, with regard to what is going to be your enterprise structure underlying that to be defined. Uh, then use uh, production planning to ensure the optimal schedules. Uh, predictive and preventive maintenance activities. Uh, that's where like, you have also uh, the Oracle functionality of predictive maintenance being inbuilt, and also you can have your maintenance management cloud also being utilized, which can be <coughs> for your, your facility or the manufacturing equipment maintenance purposes. And uh, anticipate and respond quickly on the changing customer demand. Now, again, this is something which is where your, uh, your tracking and visibility for those dashboards is where it plays a critical role. And uh, Oracle also comes with uh, many of the AI uh, artificial intelligence based tools uh, now with the modules and also the social aspect for it. When that can be something should be a uh, recommendation is to implement or to incorporate that as a part of their uh, overall project planning or the solution design standpoint. So with that, anyway, I think we're going to cover a couple of uh, things about that too. Uh, moving to a uh, subsequent slide, talking quickly about cross-functional flow samples uh, like Oracle Manufacturing Cloud. Uh, so there are multiple uh, business processes you can have which can be utilized or implemented for Oracle Manufacturing Cloud. So it can be for your plan to produce for your in-house purpose or your back-to-back -to -back, uh, fulfillment or you can have your design for your uh, configured item fulfillment for the make purpose. So you can have any of this or mix and match or contract manufacturing. So we'll just touch about a couple of business processes that how it looks like when you are having your Oracle uh, Cloud offering, right? So you can have your, uh, your value chain planning, uh, integrating with your manufacturing cloud, your logistics, costing. So as you can see here, like your uh, fixed value chain planning to supply chain planning, uh, that's what something which has been happening and the challenges uh, with regard to your work order orchestration and updates your finished goods and essentially updates your costing. So that's something uh, in single system helps with regard to your plan to produce uh, business process being catered as part of Oracle Cloud. And similarly, if you talk about from the back-to-back uh, -back fulfillment uh, make standpoint, again, you have your auto promising, uh, auto management playing a key role as part of that, which uh, through your thermal supply chain orchestration business process uh, feeds into your Oracle Manufacturing Cloud. So uh, just again, touching upon a few of the business process, uh, how it looks like, when you're having uh, Oracle Cloud. Uh, with that, moving to the social network collaboration, uh, you can have uh, the social network collaboration functionality in Oracle Cloud. As you can see here, 
uh, on the right side for the item structure, uh, you can have your details being captured. Now for that specific details, uh, you can have, I mean, e, you can collaborate across your supply chain organization in the real time as part of this collaboration. And you can track your conversation tech to a specific transaction for future reference. So in the subsequent slide, uh, let me just quickly show you here. So whatever the, uh, on the right side, as you can see, for a specific uh, item and for the specific version, you're able to capture the details. You can actually attach any of the documents if you require. And the good thing about it is, is it's not just about a standard uh, chat tool within Oracle Fusion, but it's you're tagging your conversation, your document supporting documents to that specific transaction. So that's kind of a good thing about um, sub social network collaboration functionality of Oracle Cloud. Uh, now talking about the mobile or handheld device based functionality, right? So uh, let's say if you're a production supervisor and you would like to utilize this and would like to have the real time visibility, you can use this or the person who is on the shop floor uh, who is actually making an execution of the transactions, he can have the transactions being created. So uh, the first screenshot showcases kind of a dashboard, okay, uh, starting completing today, how many of them are past you, uh, how many of them are on hold. You can click on those and you can actually uh, review those transactions uh, from your mobile application and you can actually maybe if it's on hold to release the hold or based on that you can try to see more details so basically the good thing about it is as a part of this uh handheld or mobile or tablet based device you can have a you can search it by the barcode or you can just type in the details uh either of the options and you can uh transact on it as part of uh, a quick uh, smart manufacturing adoption uh again giving a bit of so if you click on any, any of the work order specifically you can see what the status the details of it and you can actually act upon that work order you see the details for those what are the different items associated for that particular work order and you can either email the information you can release or you can put it on hold or you can even cancel the work order from the mobile or tablet friendly device so that's what uh looks like uh when you're trying to adopt the barcoding functionality, and that is what something which is critical for your manufacturing uh, unit, because that's something which helps you to expedite the transactions without you going back to your desktop uh, and making the changes. And not only that, even if you're having your uh, mobile capable device, uh, having effective, effectively barcoding scanning functionality, it helps to minimize your data entry part uh, for the person who is on the shop floor. And from that, uh, from there, same uh, device you can provide the notifications and alerts to the right people for any of the actions that needs to be taken up so with that <clears throat> we are uh, towards the end of our concluding our presentation uh, so would like to open the forum for Q and a for uh, you know the questions which attendees have and would like to thank all of you for today's session and we'd like sharing across quick uh, contact details if you have got any questions which we are not able to answer as a part of the session, uh, please feel to drop us a note on our email, let's talk at nextinfo.com, and we'll be very really happy to address any of the questions which are unanswered as part of this presentation. Great. Thank you. Uh, Thank back you to you so Amelia. Much. Thanks, Amal. That was an awesome presentation and very informative for our community. We do have a few questions in our question box, so I'm going to post them into our chat. Starting here with question one, so the whole audience can see. With cloud, do mixed model slash hybrid manufacturing exist in the same inventory org? And then in parentheses, they have EBS terminology. Mal, did you get that one? Sorry, yeah. So, yeah, I, I got the question. Thanks. So, yeah. Uh, again, I, I assume like this is more from the Oracle Cloud is what you're asking. So, yes. Within Oracle Cloud, you can have this mixed mode manufacturing. You can tag it to your inventory org or the manufacturing unit, and you can have it defined according to it. So yes, it's not something which you have to adopt kind of uh, across the application. You can have it at an inventory org level. All right. Our second question, does the hybrid mode work well with outside processing? Uh, yeah, so with regard to your outside processing or for your contract manufacturing, yes, uh, that can be adopted. 
for both uh, for the for both process and discrete part. All right. Next question. It sounds like where customers have customizations that they can or won't leave behind when migrating to cloud from EBS, there's an option to put those on pass and then integrate them to the cloud apps. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, so basically uh, for the customers who are having the heavy customizations and because of those customizations, they are not uh, ready to leave it. Yes, uh, pass can be utilized, but actually uh, Oracle has got multi multitude of uh, options. A, uh, it has got Oracle Integration Cloud, which is called OIC, which is typically used for moving the data from one application to another uh, with inbuilt uh, adapters to talk with uh, even Oracle EBS kind of applications. So that can be one route. Uh, platform as a service is typically to be suggested to be utilized uh, not from the, I mean, it can be used from the integration standpoint, but it's more about where you want to have any custom development or custom storing of the data because platform as a service comes with its own set of data to hold the data, uh, to transform and create some business tools, or you can actually create your some smart forms and custom development for the UI standpoint. So that's where typically platform as a service is used, which is more for the development. But if you're trying to planning to integrate EBS with any of your cloud apps, for example, uh, OIC would be a better uh, recommended product for you and so that it can help not only with integrating EBS with your Oracle Cloud apps, but also with any of the non-Oracle application too. Okay, next question. In one of the case studies, they saw a smart form created for item creation. Is it a custom form created in Oracle Cloud? Uh, yes, that was a custom uh, smart form created in Oracle Cloud. So uh, again, this is something to inform that uh, platform as a service was utilized for creating it. So Oracle Cloud, uh, as we know, like uh, it's been, as the term being said, like move, the more you move to cloud, you're standardizing your process. So you're adopting uh, whatever the delivered functionality rather than customizing. But if you have a need which is uh, business specific, uh, maybe for your, from the competitor standpoint, it provides you some uh, business advantage, or you have some business process which is more critical for your business need, Oracle provides platform as a service which can help to define and design such kind of uh, custom bolt-on uh, forms, which can have its own business rules to house the data and transform it before it can be pushed back to Oracle Cloud. But again, uh, to, to your question, yes, uh, it was done in Oracle Cloud, but utilizing platform as a service. But if it is just about enabling few fields or changing the look and feel of the screen, uh, that does not require platform as a service. Uh, Oracle Cloud has got uh, that capability, but if it's a complex bolt-on functionality, uh, that's where you need to adopt for platform as a service. All right, thank you so much. Um, we have been getting some more questions roll in. Since we are at the end of our hour, it looks like we will not have enough time to address all of them. Um, it looks like we have an email here. So if your question was not able to be addressed just because we had so many roll in at the very end, um, we've got let's talk at nextinfo.com. You can go ahead and send an email through to that. Well, is there any other email or contact information where people can reach you? We also have our OATUG site as well. Yep, I think let's talk at nextinfo.com should be the good and go to email ID and we'll be really happy to uh, answer any of the questions which we are not able to answer. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you everyone for your time and respect of that. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this up for today. So thank you Himal for such an awesome presentation and thank you to everyone who came today. That concludes our webinar and everyone have a great afternoon. Thank you so much.